From artificial intelligence to students' mental health, technology's effects on learning dominated this year's South by Southwest EDU. This is Common Sense Explains. Hi everyone and welcome to our 10th episode. I am Lorena Taboas. Thousands of leaders in tech, film, and music are gathering this week at South by Southwest, but last week educators came together for South by Southwest EDU to talk about what's happening in the education space. But what exactly is South by Southwest EDU? Let me explain. In the last decade, the conference has grown from 800 to over 8,000 participants and has quickly become one of the best known dates in the EdTech conference circuit. There are hundreds of panels and discussions on education, policy, innovation, and of course, it's 2023, so the rise of artificial intelligence. Let's connect with Ben Cornell, a former middle school teacher and San Carlos School District board member and current managing director of Common Sense Growth who attended South by Southwest EDU. Hi, Ben. Hi, Lorena. So you attended the conference last week. What was the main theme or topic that you think stood out at this year's conference? Well, first, Lorena, thanks so much for having me on the pod. It, this was my fifth time at South by Southwest EDU. And each time it's like a glimpse into the future. What's coming in education, technology, policy, curriculum. Um, and of course, 2023 has been an exciting year in terms of all the new things that are coming out. In particular, the conference this year focused on AI, mental health, and also global learning. Um, One thing to note though, that was a little bit different about the conference this year. Normally it's this great convening of thousands of educators alongside hundreds of ed tech companies, alongside policymakers this year. It was notable the, the lower attendance of educators. And I think that speaks to one of our challenges as a country is the teacher shortage. And so there weren't as many uh, frontline classroom teachers who were able to make it. And so mainly it was district administrators. We actually had the um, vice secretary of education come and talk. Um, so it was really well attended, but it was also one of those moments where all of this excitement about innovation, but also these real challenges in implementation. So then let's talk about those challenges, artificial intelligence. What are educators saying about chat GPT? You know, actually I was really impressed. There was overall a kind of sense of optimism. Um, about half of the educators um, in recent surveys are using chat GPT in their classroom lessons. And they're seeing it as a real opportunity to unleash creativity of their students. They're also using it to augment reading, writing, and math to kind of differentiate it for different student levels. So overall, the kind of heartbeat of the conference was optimism about the possibilities of AI. And that was balanced with concerns about cheating, um, learning the basics, and also just the rate of change. I, I would just say that that was probably the biggest takeaway here is that you know education tends to be an industry where change is slow. and Based on everyone's feeling at South By, it was clear that the rate of change has just accelerated exponentially. And so there are a lot of questions, not only about what the tech is, but also how do we support educators, schools, families, learners to adapt to this nonstop change? One of the session titles that really stood out to me was Are Smartphones the Next Teen Addiction Crisis? You went to that panel. What were your takeaways? Well, first, I thought the biggest takeaway was it's not the next teen addiction, it's already here. And some of the stats in the session were really sobering. Uh, Loneliness and isolation is up despite social media. More and more teens are spending time immersed in TikTok and YouTube. And we, we actually heard stories about, you know, half of all teen boys don't feel like they have a best friend. There's many ways in which we can point blame on the mobile phone itself, but there was also a lot of conversation around these addictive loops and how products are actually built in order to kind of create these dopamine hits and keep um, learners engaged. So a lot of good conversation about it um, and also a lot of conversation around how can we provide guidelines or supports to help teens break that addiction. The closing keynote was very, very powerful, kind of about this topic. It talked about safer schools. It focused a little bit on gun policy. The mom of one of the uh, victims at Uvalde was on the panel. They focused a lot on mental health. How do you think 
that educators are dealing with a youth mental health crisis right now. Frankly, we're hearing and seeing a mental health crisis among educators. So it's not just students, it's not just families that are struggling, it's educators th themselves. And um, one of the salient points from the session was really about how this crisis has actually been going on for decades. It's been unrecognized, um, the awareness has been low, but because of COVID, not only did the crisis accelerate, but also awareness. And so the kind of uplifting part of the, the session was really around how schools can become a focal point for delivering the services that kids and families need. That can be school lunch and food security. It can be basic safety, but it can also be mental health supports. Like with that being said, we know that teachers are already facing so much in the classroom and even outside of the classroom. How do you think that they can better engage parents to help kids, not just in school, but in, in their everyday life? There is so much going on. People feel bombarded. So how do you build partnership between parents and educators when everyone is stretched so thin? Um, the second kind of driver is that the politics have been really divisive. It used to be that educator was one of the most trusted positions really in, in all of our economy. And now um, many are questioning whether the educators have the best interests of the learners in mind. And then third, the needs of learners have grown. So just like I mentioned, it's not just enough to get an A on your spelling test. You're also trying to meet all the social emotional needs of the learners and really prepare them for a dynamic future. And so, you know, as I think about that as a school board member, as I was listening to some of the experts at South By, we, we heard one really clear theme, which is start with open communication. There's got to be two-way conversation and this idea that everything comes from a central mouthpiece from the school district, that's got to go away. Because in the era of social media, in the era of network communication, people need to feel like they know what's going on and that they're they're accessing communication in multiple languages, through multiple modalities, et cetera. Those were kind of tactical, practical recommendations that I heard at the conference and I've just been seeing in the space. But I think the biggest takeaway was just for educators leading with grace. And that's grace with your parents in your classroom, with your learners, but also with yourself. There's so much that people are dealing with that we are aware of or maybe not aware of and just um, leading with compassion and kindness is really, really critical at this really challenging time. Those are really some great takeaways, Ben. Thanks so much for sharing that. Is there another upcoming education conference that teachers should know about? Yeah, well, if you miss South by Southwest EDU, you don't have to wait a whole year. Um, in June, in Philadelphia, June 26, um, ISTE will be happening. And that's usually the largest gathering of the year something like 20 to 30,000 educators attend. We'll have common sense activities and events there. And there'll be plenty of time to talk about AI, mental health, and our new global education systems. And we also invite everyone to sign up for our education newsletter, where we have a ton of great information on education trends and free resources for teachers. You can find that link in our episode description. Until next time.